Welcome to the Human Body News. I'm Anchor Lady. And last week on the show, we had DNA talking to us about transcription. And today, we have protein on the show. There are three parts to this protein. And first up, we're going to be talking with polypeptide chain number one. Hi, Anchor Lady. Thanks for having protein on your show today. Oh, no worries, polypeptide. It's great to have you here. I've got a question for you. Oh, as long as you're not talking about my girlfriend, eh? She's so hot, she could cause me to be nature. Oh, no oh. worries, Polly One. We stick strictly to science on this show. No gossip here. Cut that bit out about the girlfriend! <clears throat> so, how are you important to the functioning of this protein? Well, all the polypeptides are important because together we make up the overall shape of the protein, and this helps the protein carry out its function. For example, all the polypeptides here today, together we make up the insulin receptor protein. Wow, that sounds like you have an important job. Yes, it is very important for keeping blood glucose levels within a homeostatic range. Can we invite the other polypeptides from your protein out? And you, can you show us how you make your shape? Sounds good to me. We are the remaining polypeptide chains which make up the insulin receptor protein. Wow, you guys are all so good looking! Why, well, thank you! <laughs> Show me how you work your magic. Well, Anchor Lady, each polypeptide can make one of two shapes. An alpha helix, or a beta sheet. Then once we have made our secondary shapes, we can make bonds to form a tertiary shape. For example, I might make a hydrogen bond with polypeptide 2 as well as an ionic bond. Then I might have a hydrophobic collapse. <laughs> or make a disulfide bridge with polypeptide 1. So you have um, a couple of different tertiary structures here, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Then we can come together to form a protein complex with an overall shape. This is the quaternary structure of the protein and it determines how we are going to do our job. In this instance, we are the perfect keyhole for an insulin molecule to connect to us and then a message can be sent to the cell to tell it to open up to have a higher glucose intake. Here's an insulin molecule. Would you like to see if it fits? Okay, sounds good. Well, that would be catastrophic. We wouldn't be able to do our job properly and therefore homeostasis wouldn't be able to be maintained in the human body. The insulin wouldn't fit into our protein molecule like a lock and key and we wouldn't be able to tell the cell to open the doors to let glucose in. Would you like to see if the insulin fits if polypeptide 1 is broken? Hmm, okay. share its signal with the cell. It's a catastrophe, right? That's why the shape and structure of the protein are so important to the function and job of the protein. There is a very strong relationship between structure and function. It is our job to be good insulin receptor protein and look after our humans. Talking of that, we better go back. Okay, well, thanks for coming. It's been an experience learning about your job. And next week, we have the phosphorylation cascade to talk to. We hope you have enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you again next time.
proteins made of amino acids. They're proteins made of amino acids. It's proteins made of amino acids. It's just like it's it's proteins made of amino acids. Proteins made of amino acids. They're proteins made of amino acids. It's just like it's it's proteins. My bros have seen it. They say it builds muscle. I say yeah, I mean it's a macromolecule we can use and that we can make lots of useful little enzyme tools that can do things like break other molecules put some back together grab another protein and pull it like a lever that's how muscles flex when lots of proteins pull but proteins need energy they do not work alone